The Lord be with you. Greetings from St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Junction City, Wisconsin. I'm Pastor Timothy Roser, and on this Christmas day, we follow the order of Matins. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ. Alleluia. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. O come, let us worship him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. The deep places of the earth are in his hand. The strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. O oh, come, let us worship him. Our office hymn is number 379 in Lutheran service book, O Come, All Ye Faithful. O come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant, O come ye, O come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, born the king of angels. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Highest, most holy, light of light eternal, born of a virgin, a mortal he comes. Son of the Father, now in flesh appearing, O oh, come, let us adore him, O oh, come, let us adore him, O oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Sing, choirs of angels, Sing in exultation, sing all ye citizens of heaven above. Glory to God in the highest, O oh, come let us adore him, O oh, come let us adore him, O oh, come let us adore him. Christ the Lord. Yea, Lord, we greet thee, born this happy morning. Jesus, to thee be glory given. Word of the Father, now in flesh appearing. O oh, come, let us adore him. O oh, come, let us adore him. O oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. The Old 
Old Testament reading for the Nativity of our Lord is from Isaiah chapter 62. Go through, go through the gates, prepare the way for the people. Build up, build up the highway, clear it of stones. Lift up a signal over the peoples. Behold, the Lord has proclaimed to the end of the earth. Say to the daughter of Zion, behold, your salvation comes. Behold, his reward is with him and his recompense before him. And they shall be called the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord. And you shall be called, sought out, a city not forsaken. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. In those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of a great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text is the appointed epistle reading from St. Paul's letter to Titus, chapter 3. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God, our Savior, appeared, he saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that, being justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is our text. How do we understand Christmas? I mean, what is this day? Is it an event, a tradition, a collection of memories? Is Christmas a story, a myth, a fairy tale? Or is it perhaps a whole cluster of myths, uh, one fairy tale piled up on top of another? Face it, we hear many stories of Christmas. We hear tales of Santa Claus, of Charles Dickens' ghosts of Christmas's past, present, and future, of Dr. Seuss's Grinch, of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, Frosty the Snowman, Trolls, Smurfs, and countless other characters. Somehow all of these are Christmas stories. Many people will say that there's something magical about this time of year. Some suggest that it has something to do with the winter solstice and ancient pagan beliefs connected to the hours of daylight getting longer. If 
that were the case, then we're a couple of days late. We should have celebrated on December the 21st, along with all the other pagans gathering at Stonehenge in England. Others just speak of a spirit of the season that is supposed to last all year, but never does. So how do we understand Christmas? What is this day? Well, let's begin at the beginning and recognize Christmas for what it was at first, history. When St. Paul wrote to Titus, he talked about when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared. And there was one specific point in history when God's love for humanity appeared, when it became known, when it was manifested for all to see. It was that night when a bunch of shepherds were out in the fields of Bethlehem, keeping watch over their flock. For on that night an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear, which is what usually happens when mortal men are confronted with angelic messengers shining with the glory of God. And the angels said to them what such angels usually do say, Fear not. Don't be afraid. But now that I've got your attention, listen up because I've got something important to say to you. For behold, I bring you good news of a great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And those shepherds went and did just that. They found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger just as it had been told to them. That's the history of Christmas. What happened on that night when Jesus was born? The Magi, the wise men, didn't show up until a year or so later, but they usually get included in the Christmas story too. Other than that, there's not much to say. We don't usually talk about Simeon and Anna when Jesus was presented in the temple eight days later, or the Holy Family's flight to Egypt to escape Herod's slaughter of the innocents in Bethlehem. Historically speaking, we don't hear anything more about Jesus until he was 12 years old, and then again when he was 30 and began his earthly ministry. But, historically speaking, that's the point. While those facts might end the Christmas story, we can't stop there. If we do stop there, as so many people do, then Christmas gets us nowhere. For Christmas is not just one odd event standing out there all by itself. Historically, it's the beginning of something much greater. Christmas is the appearing of the Savior, but not yet his work of salvation. That comes next. And without the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, Christmas means nothing. Here at Christmas begins the revealing, the physical appearing of the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior. For ever since our first parents, Adam and Eve, fell into sin, all of us have been born spiritually blind, spiritually dead, and enemies of God. We would be lost, separated from God forever, unless delivered from these bodies of death. And there's no way we can save ourselves. It's only through the death and resurrection of Jesus that he saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy. So Jesus died on the cross, paying the price of our sins to set us free from the death and punishment we deserve. Then Jesus rose to life again on the third day, breaking the power of death while the, with the promise that all who believe in him will rise again at the last day to the perfection and glory of everlasting life with God. This is what Jesus came to do, fulfilling what the prophet Isaiah had foretold. Behold, Yahweh has proclaimed to the end of the earth, say to the daughter of Zion, behold, your salvation comes. Behold, his reward is with him and his recompense before him. And this good news is not just for a select few. It is, as the angel told the shepherds, good news of great joy that will be for all the people. So Christmas is history, but it's part of a much bigger history than most people imagine. It's not just what happened in the stables of Bethlehem, but in the whole life of the Son of God here on earth in human flesh. And that history makes Christmas more than just a story that we can leave in the past. 
That history makes Christmas a reality for the present, our present. You see, the good news announced by the angels centuries ago is still good news for all people, for you and me today. And it's good news we desperately need, for some things have not changed. In spite of all our advances in science and philosophy and technology, we are still born spiritually blind, spiritually dead, and enemies of God. We still face being separated from God forever, and we are still unable to save ourselves from our sinful condition. Yet, because of Christmas and all that followed Christmas, when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared in the past, he saved us today. Through Jesus' birth, life, suffering, death, and resurrection, he created a gift for us, the gift of forgiveness of our sins, the gift of life instead of death, the gift of salvation from hell. That gift isn't floating around in the air as part of the mystical spirit of the season, nor will you find it wrapped in colorful paper under your Christmas tree. The Holy Spirit has a much more direct and simple delivery system. He has given you this gift in the water and word of holy baptism. As Paul writes, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit. And that comes to us as the word of God in and with the water of baptism. Works forgiveness of sins, rescues from death and the devil, and gives eternal salvation to all who believe this. Through holy baptism, we who were born in original sin have been made right with God by his grace. Jesus' birth has led to our rebirth, and we have been born again into a new life. Now our lives enjoy a renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom God pours out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior. For in baptism, we died and were buried with Jesus. His death put the old sinner in us to death. And in baptism, we rose to life again with Jesus. His resurrection from the dead raises us to new life as new creatures of God, our sins forgiven, able to arise and to live before God in righteousness and purity forever. That's right, forever. For not only is Christmas the history of the past and the reality of the present, it is also a promise for our future. Through this gift of baptism, God promises that being justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. In other words, because of Jesus' saving work for us, which began at Christmas and which continues in our baptismal life today, you and I have God's promise that we will inherit the everlasting life which God intended for us at the creation of the world. Think of that. All this Christmas celebration and the joys of eternity with God, too. This is what God wrapped up for you in swaddling cloths and laid in a manger long ago and far away. This is what God had in mind when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared. How shall we understand Christmas? What is this day? It is history, reality promise, all rolled into one, and more. It is, to use a New Testament word, a mystery. Something we can talk about, describe, ponder, marvel at, and never fully explain. For it is always beyond our understanding. And that is the wonder and the joy of this truly marvelous, mysterious, gracious gift of God. Rejoice, for this gift is yours. In the name of Jesus, amen. And so the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We continue with the Te Deum. We praise you, O God, we acknowledge you to be the Lord. All the earth now worships you, the Father everlasting. To you, all angels, cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To you, cherubim and seraphim, continually do cry. 
Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of the majesty of your glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise you. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise you. The noble army of martyrs praise you. The holy church throughout all the world does acknowledge you. The father of an infinite majesty, your adorable true and only son, also the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. You are the King of glory, O Christ. You are the everlasting Son of the Father. When you took upon yourself to deliver man, you humbled yourself to be born of a virgin. When you had overcome the sharpness of death, you open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You sit at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that you will come to be our judge. We therefore pray you to help your servants whom you have redeemed with your precious blood. Make them to be numbered with your saints in glory everlasting. O Lord, save your people and bless your heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify you, and we worship your name forever and ever. Grant, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. O Lord, let your mercy be upon us, as our trust is in you. O Lord, in you have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come to you. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. The Lord be with you and have a blessed Christmas time.